Well, good morning from Stoked on Fishing. Uh, today we have a special guest on our boat. We're actually on my buddy's boat, Pete Tito from Titus Marine Technologies. Marine Technologies. <laughs> Our company is based in Orange County, California, and we surf all the way up from Marina del Rey down to San Diego. And we do everything from marine navigation electronics uh, to audio, video, communications, electrical work. And you can reach us at 949-614-9850 or our website, which is titusmarinetech.com. Today, we're going to upgrade the software. The boat has a Simrad NSS EVO 2, and we're going to upgrade the software to the current version. And we're going to show you how to do that that way. If you have a system with Simrad and you want to upgrade the software, you can do that easily. How you doing, Andrew, buddy? Fine, thank you. How you well, doing? Well, I just want to say thank you for letting us on your boat today. We're going to do some upgrades, bring it up to uh, 2019. This guy has the best restaurant in Huntington Beach, Bon Gusto. Um, if you guys never tried it, you got to check it out. It's on the corner of uh, Warner and Bolsa Chica. All right, so it's very simple to download the software from the Simrad website. Uh, you go to the simrad-yachting.com and you can see it here on the screen. And uh, what you're gonna do is basically go to the support tab and then go to software or manuals download. Uh, you're gonna need one of these, which is a micro SD card. This one is inserted on the regular SD card, but the units need a micro SD card, no bigger than 32 gigabytes or smaller than four gigabytes. Uh, then you're gonna put it in your computer, go to the site, and you're gonna see where it says uh, download. And basically, you're going to download the software based on your model. We're going to be doing on this boat an NSS EVO 2, and we're going to bring it up to date. The software tells you when it was released. That way, you know you have the latest. And then I'm going to show you how to put it in the machine. So up here at the software, on the side of the unit, you're going to have a little SD card slot, which is protected by this watertight uh, little door. And you're going to see two... Uh, micro SD card slots. You can choose either one and what you're gonna do you're gonna take the micro SD card and insert it uh, in either one. You're gonna close that out. All right now we got the card inserted in the unit and what we're gonna do we're gonna upgrade the unit uh, with the unit turned on. There's two ways to do it. You could insert the card, power on the unit and the software upgrade is gonna happen automatically or you can manually do it by going to the files and selecting the software upgrade like I'm gonna show you. You're gonna go to files you're gonna find your memory card. In that memory card, select the unit that you want, which in our case is the NSS EVO 2. And the unit is gonna tell you, you wanna upgrade this, and basically you're gonna select upgrade, and the, it's ready to upgrade, press okay. The unit is gonna restart and proceed with the software upgrade. So right now, the one unit is actually doing the software upgrade. As you can see, that's a process bar. But to keep in mind, if you have multiple units on your vessel, make sure you upgrade all the uh, displays individually because they need to be upgraded individually. Another great thing you could do with the new software is find out if there's other software uh, upgrades needed in the network. Right now, the system automatically prompt me that there's a software available, so I'm gonna click yes, and it's gonna show me what unit in the system is needed it needs a, a software upgrade. Right now it's telling me that my 4G radar has a version of 4.2 and it needs uh, 4.3. I have that on the SD card, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that software upgrade as well. I'm gonna go to my storage and I'm gonna find again my memory card. And here I have a uh, different softwares, but this one here is for the 4G. I'm gonna select that, which is the one that it was prompted and I'm gonna upgrade that. Select the device and start the upgrade. Now we're going to do an autopilot dock size settings. On this boat we have an NSS EVO 2 and we're going to use that as our autopilot main display. Even though we have an AP24 head unit, uh, it is easier to do this, the calibration and the commissioning from the big display. That's one of the benefits of the new NSS EVO 2 that you don't really need an autopilot head unit. You can do everything from the display. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to look for the autopilot on the settings and we're going to go to the installation and we're gonna to go to commissioning. So it's gonna ask you to take control by pressing the standby auto key and then press okay. Enable virtual feedback. What that means, this boat doesn't have an actual rotor feedback. It has two outboard engines and it's using the virtual rotor feedback feature. So right now we already have everything set up, 12 volts for the drive and in VRF it's virtual uh, rotor feedback. And we're gonna go ahead and do the rotor feedback. So what it's asking us to do is center the wheel Basically, center the engines and make sure your engines are right now in the center position. So once you press next, 
is going to try to turn the engines and it's going to do it several times because what it's doing is applying minimal voltage to the pump until it actually moves the engines right now we didn't see any movement so we're going to say no they didn't move we're going to wait again they didn't move either they still didn't move now we're moving a little bit but we're going to do one more to apply higher voltage and now it did move so apply higher voltage yes and now we're going to move the rudder or the engines all the way to the starboard so now we just finish our calibration and the system now knows what the center position is for the engines and what the port and starboard max angles are now we go to the ocean to sea trial all right so what we're going to do now we're going to calibrate the compass Uh, so what we're going to do now, we're going to start the calibration and uh, you always want to find a place that is open because it's going to take you a whole one and a half turn at idle uh, to do this. So make sure the water's clear, the channel's clear, wherever you're at, and it's very slow. So we're going to watch the rate of turn and just keep it there until the calibration is completed. And what we're looking for is no magnetic variation or uh, anything that's affecting the compass. That being uh, batteries, anything that you store near the compass uh, could be affecting it. You know, backpacks with like batteries or backpacks with metal optics, that will affect uh, the compass. So make sure you know where the compass is at and also make sure that it's clear, at least within three feet of anything that creates a magnetic field. So what we're doing now, we're watching that we're staying within two to three seconds in our rate of turn. That way the compass it starts turning slowly and just yeah, trying to find exactly. anything that's uh, that making an effect that. on the we're magnetic field around it. You know, the compass, one thing we want to kind of check out real quick is your course over ground and your heading. And make sure that those are pretty close course over ground is actually your satellite GPS heading which is acquired by your GPS position so right now the boat is heading in a 284 285 degree uh, you know direction and the heading which comes from the compass is telling us about the same uh, you're always going to navigate by heading from the compass of autopilot not course over ground but it's a good reference just to you know ride. calibrate and confirm that your heading is uh, correctly all right, so now we're going to do the autopilot uh, auto tune calibration. Let's go back to the autopilot settings, installation, commissioning. We're going to take control by pressing the standby auto, press OK, and then we're going to go to auto tune. We want to make sure that when you're doing this calibration, you want to be in open water uh, because the boat is going to do a series of S turns and the boat is going to be basically in the command of the autopilot, not you. So make sure there's no boats. There's nothing that's going to keep you from finishing the calibration because it's very important that you do it without stopping. Now that we completed the auto tuning, what we're going to do is just check that we're tracking and we're tracking on a straight line and maintaining that course. Are you going to hit the nav chart? That way you can kind of see where you're at. The reason I like doing this is because you can see if you're maintaining a straight line, a course line, or not when you're tracking. So here with a shortcut of the autopilot screen, you're going to bring up the autopilot. You're going to select engage. And by engaging the pilot, now it's telling us that we have an autopilot heading hold of 165 degrees. And we can make corrections by 10 degrees or 1 degree increments. So let's test it out right now and see what it does. So as you can see, we're here coming into Harbor, Huntington Harbor, and what we want to do is show you real quick how you engage a waypoint with a pilot. Uh, it's fairly simple. You basically pick a point on the chart we want to navigate to, press menu, press go to, and then go to the cursor. One of the best things about this pilot is it asks you right on screen if you want to engage the pilot in that mode. It's going to tell you how many degrees is going to turn, you want to confirm that, and now you're in autopilot nav mode. It's that easy.
Don't forget, make sure to subscribe to our Stoked on Fishing channel for non-stop fishing footage, full episodes, how-to videos, and much, much more.